Hello everyone. In this screencast, we're going to introduce you to live binders, how to register, and even how to start setting up your own ePortfolio. So what you're first going to do is you will visit livebinders.com Once you're on that site, up here in the right hand corner you will see sign up. Over here use whatever you would like to use for your username. You could use any email address you would like. Uh, password is up to you. So we'll just kind of create one here. And as we finish up, you're going to see that you have, I like to know about changes. Uh, I'd like to know, be notified about comments or views on my binders. Those are just email messages to you. You could do whichever you would like. Once you have done that, then just go ahead and sign up now for free. All right, once your account has been created, this is what you see right here is your very first binder this is a how-to guide to learning live binder basics if you were to take a quick peek at that by clicking on that binder you're gonna see all of their little tips and tricks that they have here's the tutorials how to change some things around so this way you can always refer back to that process of how do I do this how do I do that You'll see, again, these are called tabs across the top. Anything down below are called sub-tabs. So you, this way you can kind of just browse around and get some ideas of structure and layout. Once you are ready to return back to that, to edit, right here you'll go. Go right up here to the start and say start a blank binder. You'll give it a name. So I may call it, you know, ePortfolio, you might call it history, science, whatever you would like to do and whatever you're trying to create using this binder. In this example, we'll just call it ePortfolio. We're going to make it private for now but what thing you want to make sure you do is make it public once you are completely done with it and you want to share it with folks you can even and to do that we'll show you in a little bit but I would just say leave it as default for personal right now you could choose education if you want but for now just you could leave it as your choice or default of personal and now create the binder Now you'll see down below here, this is the edit menu. You can close the edit menu, so that way you see your screen, but you can go right up here to edit menu and bring that right back. Now, we're going to close it for a moment and just show you a few things up here across the top. Again, here's tab, so you might say me and then you could always if you want a sub tab you can come right up here and go to add new sub tab now here's one thing that's really nice is you can go into a website and we'll just say this one and choose insert and there you go the website is now there. So you could say you know, Sterling College, so this way they know what they're doing and they could actually now interact with the website. So back up under me, we might even put in here your personal website. You might put in 
if you want to, Facebook page, just whatever you would like to do, or you could even do an image. So let me show you something here. We're going to go to Edit Menu. I'm going to go to Insert Media. And we're going to go Flickr Images. And I'm going to say Children, for example. Now you'll notice all these pictures come up across the bottom. If you don't like any of them, you can go ahead and just kind of keep browsing. But if there's one that you find, for example, this fishing and boating camp one, just click on it, and there you go. That's how you can add an image straight from Flickr. Another way you could do it is go to Upload File. So, for example, maybe I want a picture of who I am. I can go, you'll notice the size here limitations 100 meg upload for your usage and then here are the different formats JPEG, GIF, PowerPoint so I could go to choose file and then I am gonna go and get an image from a folder of mine scroll down a little bit okay and then right here say upload you'll notice that it uploaded it and there's the image now you can also go in here for text layout and change this you'll notice down here there are some different templates so you could even for example go right here and now you could create your title If you want to change this size, you would go ahead and hit this down arrow, and here's where you can change the font style. You can change the size, and it's the same thing here. You can click on this image. I can come right over here, and then you could start saying almost like putting your resume in you know you could always start it off by saying uh, right here we'll go education and then to get this indented you can go right over here increase indent and then now it's another way you can go and do your outline So those are just some of the different things that you could go ahead and do there. So that was under the me. Again, here's the sub tab. We're going to go up here. Now let's say I want to show lesson plans. Maybe these are some that you've done. Go back to upload file. Right over here, go choose file. Then you can go and find one of your documents. Let's say you have it saved on the desktop. So for example, let's see here. Okay, so we've got a file that I'm going to upload and I'm going to say open and then go to upload over here so it understands to upload it. And there you go. So actually I could just call this one instead of lesson plans, I'll say rubrics. And then that way they understand. Now, if I go to tab three, I'm going to change this and say resource sites. And then in here, I may want to just go and say under text layout, I'm going to give it a title. And on my title here, I'm going to say resource sites. for classroom integration and then just 
you can put something here or you can go ahead and just delete it out and just leave it blank then. One thing you may want to do if this is going to be your title is again increase the size of it and use the same font that you have been using. Okay, so once we're done with that, now we'll go to add a new sub tab. And what you could do here is we'll put in Discovery Education, put the website in. Now, I wanted to do this to kind of explain this to you. This is the thumbnail. The reason for this is some websites, like you saw earlier with the Sterling website, it worked fine within iframes, which is a website coding format. DiscoveryEducation.com does not play real nice in iframes. So you will want to be real cautious and not worry about this if this shows up. All a person would have to do is click here and move on. So do not panic if that happens. Now, I might even want to go over here and create another sub tab. And in this one, I may go and put And in that way, that site's there. So you could put a list of them in. If you want new tabs across the top, you can go right up here or underneath here it says tabs. Down here you could say add a tab, add a new sub tab. Now here's one thing I want to point out is, for example, if we go add new tab and then underneath here we're going to say add new sub tab and you put one in here like um, and say insert and let's say okay maybe I want to put this resource this site not underneath this tab but over under resource you will go to tabs once you're here on tabs, you'll notice it says move tab to sub tab. So I'm going to move this to resource sites and say move. Now notice you didn't see this change, but you notice up here the changes. Here's the Cyberary Marion one under resource sites. So if we go back to new tab, notice there's nothing there. So that's one way of moving stuff around rather than having to copy and paste and do all that extra stuff. Now, the final thing also, well, before we get to the final thing, back to insert media, we might go under here and just say YouTube videos, digital footprint. And hit find. and say I want this video in there so I'm gonna put that video in and there you go there is the YouTube video you can even do the search let's go user and go add new sub tab and for user we'll just say TNC 356 find and now it goes and finds that channel and you could put all of these in there so for example I can click on this one to add and add a new sub tab and add this one in and then I can go up here and just say this is our digital footprint and what I'm going to say up here is this is
using tech. That way we can kind of keep our title short. And then this one over here, we'll just talk about new teacher support. All right. So the last little thing that I want to sh remind you before closing this uh, tutorial video is that you are going to want to click on this right here where it says binder. Once you are done, change this from private to public copy disabled. That's what you want once you want your binder to be completely, completely viewable. But until then, I would keep it private. We're going to hit save. And there's how you go and create a binder. Now, a couple things. I'm going to hit back right up here. And this is going to take me back to my bookshelf. So here I'm under binders and you'll notice here's the one we just created. The image that we put on the front tab is what is the image cover. Now, if you want to change that cover, click on your binder. And we're going to go up here to view, click on edit. And it says to change your binder cover, select a tab where you click update binder cover. So what we could do again is go into rubrics and maybe what I want is this to be that. So I'm going to say update cover and there you go. It's going to change it. Now the reason it did that is this is not an image but a PDF. But this way it gives you the process. So use a different image or you could use the image that you would do like we had here. I'll go back to update cover and now it changes it back. So that's how you can change the cover on there. We're going to save it. I'm going to jump back. Look at my binders. And now when you are completely done and ready to embed this in a wiki, a blog post, or a website, what you will do is click on your binder, mouse over it, and go to Options. And then you'll see the option that says Link or Embed. Go right here. Now, you have two options to embed. This is this top option allows you to embed your binder and this is what they would see on your page or where you ever embed it. If you use the second embed option, what they will see is the actual binder already open. Kind of like what you see when you're in edit mode, but this would be in what we call play mode. So you would use that. And I'd be honest for what, depending on what you're wanting to do, maybe you want to build a bookshelf where you have a bunch of them up there. You don't want to have them open. If you're only going to put one binder in your presentation, I would use this code. That way it's embed there completely. But that again, what we did was we went to options, link and embed, and then go right here to the last one and copy that code and then just embed it into your wiki your blog post and whatever you want to do but there you go a quick overview of just how to do some of the basics of setting up your live binder enjoy <laughs>